So what is a Hoover? A Hoover is when a toxic person is trying to suck you back in after a discard, after a devaluing that ends up in silent treatment that ends up in what looks like a discard. Anytime they're trying to suck you back into giving them supply and giving them attention and putting things status quo so they can continue on with the cycle of how they treat you. So anytime they're trying to get you back, anytime they're trying to get your attention, when you've already cut ties, when you're no contact, when you've when you're no longer a part of their life. Okay. So that is a Hoover. <clears throat> we're, we're used to hearing about Hoovers. A lot of people will ask, you know, do they all Hoover? No, they don't all Hoover, but a lot of them do. Most of them do. The majority probably will at some point in time Hoover. You're never really safe, so to speak, from not getting Hoovered because it can come at any time. It can come years down the line. Let's talk about the bigger Hoovers first, really quickly. Love bombing giving you all the words you always wanted to hear. Bigger Hoovers are things like um, promises to cut, to make changes, um, acknowledging what they did wrong, but then of course, five minutes later, they deny it, okay? <laughs> things like that, the more things that feel like a Hoover might be sending you gifts, sending you um, words that give you the feeling that they really do care about you, saying all the things you always wanted to hear. Or they can be a negative big Hoover, which is smearing you, calling you names to your face, writing you giant messages full of word salad and accusations. Yes, even the negative stuff is a Hoover because what they're trying to get is your attention, not you. Does that make sense? A Hoover isn't necessarily because they want you back because they see the, the wrong of their ways and they, they want to make changes. No, a Hoover is just... Anytime they're trying to get your attention back onto them. It's like there are these subtle hoovers that happen that people don't recognize as hoovers. And then they wonder why they're feeling trauma bonded again. Or they wonder why they are feeling the urge to continue talking and like engaging, right, with, with the toxic person. What is a subtle hoover? So... You may be low contact. I'll give a couple examples. You may be low contact with someone who is a narcissist or a toxic person who uses manipulation to control you and say you have a kid together. So you have to maintain low contact and you're used to having contact with them. See, the subtle Hoover can be slipped in when they have have access to you. You haven't you're not able to go no contact. Right. They have access to you and you talk to them regularly enough. So it feels kind of normal when they text you every now and then or message you however you're communicating. And then suddenly they they slip in a sort of either a really nice gesture, a really subtle friendly sort of conversation. They lull you back into feeling safe with them. They lull you back into feeling like you might be able to get along. They, they pull you back very, very subtly. They might say things like, you know, I've been thinking about it. And the best thing for the kids might be if we just go to therapy. That can sound like they're talking about family therapy, stuff for the kids, stuff to you know help your kids through whatever they're going through with, with the separation, divorce, or whatever. But really, that's a hoover because we all know that a narcissist doesn't want to go to therapy to work on their issues. They don't. They just don't. Um, they may claim they do, but they don't. They may say it may be they um, have an, uh, smeared you. To a group of people. Oh, here's a good one. They may have smeared you to a group of people, a, a community of some sort. Okay. And then they, they are being cold, but keeping maintaining the low contact with you as you are, you know, no low contact with them. And you're having to, and they're, and they're giving you little jabs, but it's nothing really big, but you know, they're smearing you at the same time, right? To this community. Now, where they stand in this community, they want status, they want acceptance. They want to be seen as they present themselves. In other words, they want their mask to be believed, right, by the community. So they're smearing you to make themselves look good in this community, right? And this has been going on and on. And suddenly, they want to reconcile months later. Why do they want to do that? Well, they are hoovering you back in to make themselves look good to that community. 
They're making themselves look like the one who's trying. They're making themselves look like the one who's putting in the effort. Does that make sense? That's a Hoover. What it's doing is it's sucking you back in to their drama, right? Whether they are serious or not, we know they're not actually serious, but whether they are claiming to be serious or not, right? It's, it is a Hoover. Okay, so more subtle Hoovers can also be things like um, driving by your residence or your place of work um, randomly, driving by places they know you are, appearing suddenly in places and then di disappearing, sending in flying monkeys that they know will make you think of them. Those are all more subtle forms of the attempt to get your attention and get your focus back on them. The problem with it is it's actually, when you have a really big whopping love bombing Hoover, it may be hard to resist and it may completely confuse you and make you feel loved and cared for and like everything will be fine. But they fail within minutes. They fail within hours, right? It's not, it doesn't take long before the narcissist flips right back as soon as you fall for the Hoover to begin devaluing you again. And so while it's painful, those bigger Hoovers show you exactly who that narcissist is pretty quickly most of the time. There are some that can hold on a long time. Not that's a, you know, another like sort of less pop common thing to happen, but it happens. Mostly though, they they as soon as you're back, they're right back at it and bam, you're right back in it and you see it and you go, dang it, I fell for it. Now I'm in it again. Now I'm trauma bonded again. And it is frustrating and it's painful and it's difficult to get back out of, but you do it and you struggle and you go, why did I do that? Right. With the more subtle Hoovers, because you don't even know you're being Hoovered, it's really hard to see the devaluing that comes after it because it's blended in. It's like a covert way of getting you back, getting your attention back, getting your focus back. And so it's harder for you on the receiving end to know what's going on. Uh, resist it, number one, because you don't know what's happening and see it before it's too late, right? And also pull yourself back out of it. It's a slow grooming back toward where they want you, wherever that is in that moment. But when it's subtle and it's covert and it's really, really slow and steady as they build their way back into your life, they're grooming you back into your life or back into their life rather, then you, your brain, it takes way longer to catch up, like you're saying, and, and you're, you're in it before you know it. So the moral of the story is you control the low contact, you set your boundaries, you learn about your boundaries, you figure it out, you aren't their friend. Okay, you never were. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all of you out there who are thinking you can still be friends with a narcissist who are uh, struggling to understand if what you're dealing with is a narcissist, feeling like they're your best friend, feeling like they always were there for you, that they were there for you at one time and now they're not. They never were your friend. Narcissists can't be a friend. They're only, they're only out for themselves, right? They can use the word friend and they can have superficial friendships, but they don't have the empathy it takes to be a good friend to you. So here's the thing also, a lot of times people get these subtle Hoovers and what they'll tell me is that when, when I tell them it's a Hoover, they go, no wonder I was so uncomfortable. No wonder I knew something was off. I knew it. I couldn't spot it, but there it is. Right. And it can be as simple as suddenly showing interest in the kids, suddenly showing interest in a topic that they never showed interest in. It's like they're trying to lure you into a different type of relationship with them. Does that make sense? And then, and then there's the more subtle Hoovers to, I know of one that Hoovers through a lot of negativity and they will throw a bunch of negativity into correspondence that isn't necessary. Why are they doing that? Because they want to fight. Why do they want to fight? Because they want your attention. They want the, they want the drama. They want the charge they get from the interaction. They want your attention back on them. They want to know that you're there for them, that you care about them, that you, you know, you care about what they think, you care about what they feel that you're that, you know, they're trying to pull you back in one way or another. And so it can be subtle negative, it can be subtle positive, it can be completely neutral. But when they're going off the script, so the script should be when you're low contact, really, and that's another word I don't use a lot, but I'm using it here, because we've got to be careful when we have to when we have low contact, right? If it's a parent, 
say it's a uh, your narcissist is a parent or or someone in your life, a, a family member, you choose the topics that you are willing to talk about in that low contact time and be very careful that they're not topics that are personal to you because they'll just tear you apart, right? So if you chose those topics and, and they're learning the boundaries through the low contact and they suddenly go off script and want to dive into your personal life or they want, they suddenly seem so concerned about something about you or, or one of your children or it, something is up, they're just seeking attention. And remember they go in cycles and depending on the kind of attention and supply they have, in the rest of their life, they're going to use you for the other part. As resist those hoovers, anytime they're doing anything that's that you feel even a little bit like, oh, what's up here? If you're feeling like they've changed, if you're feeling from correspondence with them, like they are engaging you when you don't want to, because see, even with the negative ones, this person I was talking about will send some pretty ac accusatory nonsense in the form of word salad mixed up with taking a fact, talking around it with a bunch of word salads so that you have to answer that fact. And then you have to engage back because you need to defend yourself. Well, you don't. Okay, don't engage back. Need to know only. Answer only the questions that need to be answered. Need to be answered, not that you want to answer. You don't need to justify yourself to these people, you guys. You don't need to fall for their hoovers and you don't need to believe the lies they're telling you when they tell you that they've changed and they want things better because they don't and they aren't and they haven't. Okay. If you've not subscribed to this channel, please do hit the thumbs up.